what does the future look like for Dead Sea scholarship? As you had mentioned and alluded to it, there was a period where there was this tremendous mystery and maybe conspiracy theories. Right. Certain things were revealed, certain things weren't revealed. Where has it come to at this point and where? Well, we're in good shape now oh. from the point, yeah. We're in good shape now from the point of view that everything's been published. And anybody who wants to can uh, buy the books and read them. We have hundreds of excellent scholarly works on given texts and, and materials coming out. I was privileged just to publish the first volume of a new series of re-editing of texts in which I and uh, a former student and colleague, Andrew Gross, published a new edition of the Temple Scroll. There'll be many new editions based on scholarship after the initial editions of many of the important texts that will be coming out in the future. That will continue. The big deal now is a turn towards science. Now, this is something which can turn out to be very important. First of all, we now have online all photographs of all the texts available so that people can work with them. They tend not to do any good for people who aren't scholars in the field, but for scholars and students in the field, the ability to blow them up and maneuver them and compare them and all this kind of stuff is enormously helpful. But then what I would say about the scientific research, for example, there was a, a burnt scroll from probably the fourth or fifth century that was found, a uh, scroll of Vayikra, that was found in the synagogue in Gedi. And using sophisticated computer technology, they were able to, uh, so to speak, open the scroll and read layers of the scroll that are completely burned. This is a similar technology to what's being done with some of the uh, scrolls from Pompeii and Herculaneum, which were covered over by the, uh, by, by, by the volcanoes. Now, then another thing that's being done right now is that people are working on the ink to understand what the ink composition was. This is stimulated by the fact that they're entered into the market, some 70 forged fragments from 2002 on. I'll just tell listeners not to buy any Dead Sea Scrolls. It's a bad move. And then we have also the uh, use of science to try and determine the relationship by DNA of some parts of little fragments that we don't know where to place that may help us to place them. There uh, is in uh, development now a tool for editing Dead Sea Scrolls materials online. So there's a lot of stuff happening in that area. It's yet to really give us uh, valuable results, but it, it is the new trend now, looking at scientific uh, type approaches or technological approaches to, to working on the scrolls. Now, the big question is whether or not without corruption uh, and uh, conspiracy and all this kind of stuff, whether interest will stay with the scrolls. I can only quote my now, unfortunately, late NYU colleague, Baruch Levine, who said when the scrolls started to enter the public eye again in really the 1980s and 90s, he said that the scrolls were like Shakespeare. People would always be interested in them. It's just that the people who didn't publish them ruined it. And now they're out, the interest will keep going, and it will be always there among certain parts of the uh, intellectually interested people. And uh, his comparison with Shakespeare, you know, the average person doesn't go to Shakespeare, but a lot of people go to, and a lot of people study Shakespeare in school, and Shakespeare has become an important part of our general civilization. And his idea was that the scrolls will become a part of the discussion of ancient religion and of Judaism and Christianity, and interest will stay. Now, I could say the following about this, though, that there is a, a, an issue here in terms of uh, interest, not of a diminishing kind of interest with the scrolls. The interest seems to stay. But what we as scholars know is that it has not yet become part of the scholarly equipment of non-specialists. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that the person who teaches in ex-Christian seminary or ex-Jewish seminary may know nothing about the scrolls. And it therefore will not get into lessons on related subjects. And that is a problem. I'll just give you now a Talmudic example. Many people are aware that the exact spelling of the words in singular and plural 
for the sukkah and for the compartments of the tefillin is under debate in our sources because the rabbis derive from the spelling certain things about the number of walls of the sukkah and the number of compartments of tefillin. And yet some of the commentators jump on those explanations and say that's not what's in our Torah scroll. Now, a person who knew the Dead Sea Scrolls would have a much better time explaining why it is that the rabbis tell us that on Vavs and Yuds, we don't really know the precise spelling because they would be able to point to numerous scrolls of every biblical book that are simply not careful, careful about the spelling of Vavs and Yuds that would never come up because none of these people would ever know that that's the case in the Dead Sea Scroll because scroll scholarship has stayed inside a core group and the public has been given generalized works that the average person can read, but we don't have the sort of in-between when scholars of related subjects know something about the Dead Sea Scrolls. And that's a missing ingredient. Just to give you an example, every Bible scholar knows something about archaeology, but they may know much less about the actual Dead Sea Scrolls. So that's a challenge that Dead Sea Scrolls scholars have that I think we know about, and we're trying to do something about it. So what, what is the next steps that, that you're involved with? In, in well, I'm involved now in a fantastic new project that we actually just had the first editorial meeting literally Monday, this week. Okay, that, scoop. Uh, real, right. real Publishers is preparing to do an online encyclopedia of the Dead Sea Scrolls with all kinds of links. We're reading the article. You can link on a text. You can link on a biblical text. You could link on other uh, scholarly publications, which they have published and which therefore will be available through this system. <coughs> and it's going to be a tremendous help to scholars. Now, beyond that, I know that the Israel Museum is about to come out with a very, very beautiful book, and they hope to do a number of them on a scroll showing what this scroll really says about the history of the period to somebody who's not a Dead Sea Scroll specialist, more general type book, but that's in the middle, because it's not just one of these one volume Dead Sea Scrolls books. <laughs> so I think there's a lot, of, a lot of things down the pipeline will still be coming. We still have quite a bit of research done and a lot to do to understand the scrolls more fully. <laughs> Excuse me for coughing here. Please, please. Again, uh, Professor Schiffman on the Dead Sea Scrolls, we really touched, you know, the, the basics of the basics, but um, I hope it wakes our viewers and listeners' appetite and uh, again, urge all of, all of us to uh, purchase a couple of books on the Dead Sea Scrolls, look out for the, uh, the new ventures coming out. And again, Professor Shipman, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate your time today. Okay, thank you very much.